everybody, and welcome to Coffee Break. We're live this morning from Lucas Equine Equipment out on US 27 South, and um, we're looking forward to this show celebrating the 137th Kentucky Derby. Our very special guest uh, this morning is Mr. John Sosby, and we'll say good morning, Mr. Sosby. Good morning, John. Thank you very much. Glad we'll, to be here. We look forward to being here with you, and I appreciate Blake coming along this morning. And uh, good morning, Blake. Good morning, buddy. You understand that's your favorite, favorite. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he's my all-time favorite. Really? Been a lot of favorites. And a you were very close to secretary. Well, you know, we had him there, Claiborne. You know, from from the time at, at you know the end of his three-year-old year to till his death in '89, and mm -hmm. um, uh, the movie. You know, it brought him through his racing career as a three-year-old. Was the movie pretty true to life? Uh, it was about a housewife who became a corporate manager mm -hmm. in a man's world but, and would not accept no for an answer. But was it, do you, do, in your opinion, was it true to life? Yes, yes, up to yeah. the point, uh, you know, at the end of his racing career. Because you you were at a, uh, in a position to know about that. You yes. Were, and, and give us a little bit about your background. Well, you know, I was, I was at three years old, uh, born in Paris, and at, at, at three years old, uh, uh, my father went to work for Claiborne Farms, and after graduating from Bourbon County High and spending six months with Uncle Sam at, at Iode, and uh, uh, for 47 years I worked at Claiborne and retired in 2003 and saw the best. And Secretariat was the most beautiful animal I ever saw, mm -hmm. and I mean, he knew it. He was He was, it, he was of aware of that. He was a, the way you call him, a freak, and probably maybe he was, but... Uh, he was the man. Is there been? Um, we are here, as we said, at Lucas Equine Equipment. We're going to uh, talk now to Nick Thornton, who's the sales manager. And as I was talking to Nick uh, during the break, one of the things I found so fascinating is that you, you can't tell all your clients because some of them are very famous people. That's correct, Betty. Um, some people prefer in anonymity, and uh, uh, we respect that highly. And and uh, it's, it's, I think it's just fascinating, of course, the people that you meet and the, uh, the, it's a worldwide thing that you do here. And these are beautiful, beautiful doors, but there are, what, different, uh, so many different kinds, depending on the horse? Well, now the horse doesn't have anything to do with it, really. You don't, you don't ask the horse, Nick. <laughs> the horse really doesn't care. He's going to love it either way. Uh -huh. uh, that, that's not totally true. The, the horse is like air. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we create products that give them maximum airflow when the owners want to give them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. What makes your product, when you're uh, presenting, you're the sales manager here at Lee, is that That's correct? correct. Uh, when you're presenting your product, uh, is it safety that you're all promoting when uh, you're presenting something to a potential client? Safety is number one. We, we don't start with the way it looks, we start with the way it functions. And we want it to fit right, we want it to be strong, uh, we want to build it once so that you know the money that somebody's spending with us, it, it's a good purchase and it has value for them and safety for the horse. And uh, this time of year is a pretty exciting year, I bet, for you guys because I'm sure you've done some work for some of the uh, potential runners in the Derby. I, I don't know if you're quite familiar with any of the farms that have entries in it. I'm pretty familiar. We do a lot of work for the breeders um, and trainers. You know, there are a lot of names. There could be three, four, or five people behind a single horse that we have a relationship with in some way, shape, or form. And, and what the Derby does for us every year is create a, uh, a sense of panic because everybody's getting ready to have people come into their farms and there's always a last minute thing. So. It, it just, you know, another time of year to have fun with what we yeah, do. Tell people that or maybe not be familiar with Lucas Equine what you do. Well, we don't actually build the horse barns, but we outfit the barns for safe housing of the horses. So mm -hmm. uh, we fill all the holes, so to speak, the stalls uh, that they live in, the doors that they walk in and out of every day, the windows that give them air, uh, things like that. Mostly steel equipment, and some of it is wood as well. And we have some samples here in your show, and they're just simply beautiful. They're just beautiful. Now, I understand this is not just uh, the United States, that you're all over the world. That's correct. We actually had, um, I heard you talking about Sunday Silence earlier. He was at a farm in Japan that we actually did work for. And uh, to answer the question, he passed in 2002 and, and was actually the leading sire from 1995 until 2007 in Japan, although he passed in 2002. So interesting story there. 
Um, we're also working on a project in Australia currently that uh, by the fall we will have delivered three barns to Australia. So that's a neat opportunity for us. It's, it's just a fascinating and, business. Uh, just really enjoy it. Love the people, love the people we work for, the people I work with. Uh, these guys out in the shop here are true craftsmen and it's fun to watch what they can do. About, about how large is your staff? We're around 30 right now, mm -hmm. um, 30 individuals, and that's full-time employees, and then of course a number of support teams outside of that with our steel suppliers and truck drivers, etc. Looking at all the horses, I'm going to have to go with uh, Arch, Arch, Arch. You're picking Arch, Arch, Arch. Arch, 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 and Mucho Macho Man will be in the exotics. I'm, you I'm only picking, get one pick. Well, I'm picking Arch, Arch, Arch okay. for the <coughs> and Mucho Macho Man. Okay, I want to see the next Well, I, I have a, a kind of a special place for a Mucho Macho Man. Uh, quick story, that horse was supposedly born dead in the field, and uh, the owner rubbed the horse and, and kind of gave up on it, walked away, and he jumped up and took off sprinting. He didn't even walk, he didn't uh, He didn't stumble around, he just took off running. So, you know, he's, he's got a big heart in him, obviously, but I, I, if I had to take a pick, it's going to be dialed in. Uh, three owners there, AP and D background, I like that horse. Okay, and uh, I'll be looking at the hats. <laughs> I, I love I love horses I love animals I love to watch it but I I you know so I really don't have a pig. Betty picks pants on fire. No, Betty, <laughs> Betty's going with John. What's what's John's pick? Well, I like what Nick picked there. I love Dom. Okay. She know and he, he he's been there before. Mm -hmm. So like he's a first time man like uh, uh, Chink Chink's fires and and John Court you know uh, uh, large large arch. But that would be a story too. Okay. And then I played with the horse, but I like dial in and there's old Calvin out there. Calvin got him around. <laughs> Twice the appeal. Twice the appeal. Look how strong Uncle Mo. Uh, I think I'd say whoever wins Saturday, it's a well deserving horse. Yeah. Well, you know, each horse has its own individual story and, and all the stories are fascinating. Uh, we do appreciate being here in this beautiful showroom this morning at Lucas Equine Equipment on US 27 South. We appreciate our special guest, our, our Derby professor, John Sosby. Uh, we appreciate uh, Nick and Mandy Thornton making us feel so welcome out here this morning. And, uh, Mike, I appreciate yeah. you. You're welcome.